the new adventures of He-Man is considered the black sheep of the franchise for a very good reason. It's without question an incredibly boring sci-fi show that feels like the studio managed to get the license for He-Man, but just in case they didn't get it, they changed the designs of both him and Skeletor to be lawyer friendly. That is, however, not the case. What little I can find about the production surrounding the show is that this was the follow-up toy line that started in 89 after the original run had stopped in 87. As for the show itself, it's not done by good old Filmation, who unfortunately went defunct a year prior to this show. This was made by the American animation company Jetlag Productions, making the overall animation improved from Filmation's, uh, inconsistent methods. The cost of this was, unfortunately, everything else. This show is bland. Not just Wonder Bread bland, no, no. That has the veneer of charm. This show lacks even that. Gone are the over-the-top Frazetta-inspired character designs, and we have... this. Yes, this is the new He-Man. Yeah, you know that signature bolt cut and metal chess piece? They're gone and replaced by a ponytail with a generic leather strap and blue jeans. Oh yeah, and that iconic sword of power? Yeah, that's now some sort of long sword with a really weird double grip. Fortunately, he looks different as Prince Adam, in that he looks like a vagabond hippie rather than a prince. But it, it's not awful. He fits in with the new setting, which we'll get to. In the meantime, let's see how my boy Skeletor is doing. Oh god, what did they do to you? Oh gosh, why does he have visible eyes? Why does he have a discount Darth Vader helmet? The only good thing about this version of him is the voice actor, who isn't bringing the ham and cheese that the original one had. I actually did somewhat enjoy him though. But what about the rest of the cast? Tila, Man in Arms, Orko, or the Sorceress? Well, we do get a bit of the sorceress, a little of King Randor and Queen Marlena, whose hair is blue for some reason. However, we don't linger in Eternia. This story is actually about He-Man's adventures in the futuristic planet of Primus. Yeah, He-Man gets brought to the future by these two goofballs at the behest of this wizard-looking guy, who's not actually a wizard. I didn't even bother remembering their names because there is little to no characterization behind them. They barely have a shtick, and that goes for the vast majority of the main cast. This includes the villains who would at least have some gimmick to their characterization, but nah, even they're bland. Flunk's just a complete dunce who lets Skeletor do his harebrained schemes and wises up to him sometimes. Then there's the rest of the goons who are just varying levels of cardboard. The only exception to this blandness is, of course, annoying. The four scientists are insufferable buffoons who cause more issues to the protagonists than they solve. Not once did I laugh at these imbeciles. All I thought is, wow, these guys are the scientists of the future. This planet's screwed. In summary, the character designs of the old characters lose nearly all recognizable aspects of the original. The new characters are either bland or annoying, and the main scenario is barely connected to the original show's continuity. There was next to nothing for anyone who was attached to the original show, and since most of the witty dialogue and characterization was scraped away for bland dialogue and predictable writing, there's not much else for newcomers. Supposedly, they had plans for Season 2 to go back to Eternia, but at that point they already lost me and probably the audience. Just watching this sample of episodes that I got to watch was a slog to get through. It's not even the worst show I've ever seen, but it's not even bad in an entertaining way. It just fails to elicit much of anything from me. It's forgettable, which is the worst thing you could ever make your show. Seriously, just about every entry I found when researching this show could be considered a stub on any other site. I mean, that would imply there was anything interesting about it. It's just sad. Oh well, at least I get to move on to the 2002 reboot, which I heard was decent, so I'm looking forward to that.